So today I'm going to um, explain uh, a little bit about why we believe that um, using conversational analytics uh, is so important in the discovery phase of an omnichannel virtual assistant project. Now that's a bit of a mouthful. Normally we can uh, make a catchy title, but uh, apologies, we can't, we can't do that today. Um, before I kick off really into the topic, though um, a few words about the uh, company I work for, Spitch. We're a relatively new um, company with a kind of new kid on the block, you might say. Um, we're seven years old. We comprise of 60 employees. Um, we're uh, headquartered in Zurich in Switzerland, uh, but we're quickly starting to fan out, uh, first of all, around Europe. And now we're starting to get established uh, in the US and already working with uh, some large customers and key vendors. Um, so just a little bit about um, some of the um, uh, industry thought uh, leading um, organizations. Um, we're already punching, you might say, way above our weight in terms of recognition. Uh, and to give you just uh, one example, which is probably my uh, favorite of the recent publications, we mentioned in last year's Gartner report uh, in its guide for speech to text solutions in which we were compared quite favorably with some of the big names in the industry. So first of all, a little bit about the technologies uh, that we uh, develop. These are all our own technologies. Uh, voice biometrics, I'm sure you're all familiar with. The key differentiator is that uh, we don't um, have standard uh, passphrases. We use randomized passphrases and we also continue to monitor um, the authenticity of a caller throughout the duration of the call, uh, giving a graphic uh, representation to an agent, uh, or we can automate that in a self-service setting. Um, conversational user interface, and obviously I'm going to be speaking more about that uh, as I get into the topic, uh, but we provide everything from a simple voice and NLP um, geared um, uh, IVR automation, um, where you know the customer can just say what they're interested in, the reason for their call, and they're steered straight to the appropriately skilled agent, um, all the way through to complete self-service solutions for routine uh, requests, the sort of thing that take up 80% of the time of a call center, uh, but only need 20% of the effort. Compliance is something that is growing in popularity amongst our solution set. Um, on mainland Europe, this is uh, very regulated in call centers, especially where selling is involved. And audit is a very expensive and time consuming and stressful uh, operation for staff. Um, but our solution automates most of that process. 100% of the calls uh, can be scanned uh, for possible non-compliances. And these are easily brought to the attention of um, the auditing staff quickly by highlighting the calls where there might be a non-compliance and also guiding them straight to the words and the phrases. As you can imagine, that slashes costs. This is um, an offshoot from um, speech analytics and in fact, conversational analytics, which we're gonna be talking about today. And then on the far right, you see automation. So in other words, at the most basic uh, level of our technology is converting speech to text. And then within that um, alignment between the audio and the text and also uh, normalization. So now here's the uh, kind of controversial bit, uh, because I would I would ask you to think now when you last used a virtual assistant um, and, and what was your experience? Because, you know, did it clearly understand what you were saying? If it was a voice, uh, you know, uh, solution, even if it was text, did it understand you clearly how you want to phrase things? You know, the sort of product jargon, the phrasing that you use. Um, if you broke off, uh, in that interaction, could you rejoin down the line somewhere, either on the same channel or on a different channel? And would it pick up where you left off or would you have to go right back to the beginning of the conversation? Um, did that virtual assistant uh, know when it was out of its depth, 
So instead of having to ask uh, the, uh, the customer, did it know that it was time to hand you over to a live agent? And if that happened, did that agent uh, get all the relevant information about you and about the reason or the intent for your call? So you didn't have to go right back to the beginning. And I guess we've all had a similar experience. In other words, we've at some point hit the uh, virtual assistant brick wall. So if the answer was no to any or, or most of that, then you were probably in a multi-channel environment rather than the omni-channel. So just to stress um, our view of the omni-channel uh, conversational platform, this is this is our what we might call go-to diagram. Um, on the outside of that semi uh, circle, you've got the different touch points that the customers may use. And then further in, uh, you've got the different use cases that the channels are serving. And then in the center, you've got the uh, essential integration, obviously CRM, but there are other back end processes as well. And at the bottom of the diagram, you see some of the um, uh, uh, product areas and use cases that we're serving with the Omni channel. So, what am I saying? Well, to get to design, um, shall we say, the best possible um, uh, omni-channel solution, really what we need to do is get our hands on all the uh, recorded calls, if they're available, um, save text chats, um, social media streams, at the right at the beginning of the discovery phase, as close to the beginning of the project as possible, and then analyze them in the anal analytics platform. Obviously, we, we have a, a conversational analytics platform. We're not the only one, you know, but this is a, an essential part for the reason that um, we need to understand more about the interactions. You know, the CRM only really stores the results of all these interactions. Uh, and it's not really enough when we want to design an automated conversation solution. And by the way, it's not necessarily not necessary to uh, analyze every single one of these interactions, just a significantly um, uh, large enough uh, sample so that it's statistically uh, meaningful. So what sort of tools will be provided in this environment when we're analyzing all these interaction streams? Well, I'm sure that many people um, on the webinar today uh, will be familiar with analytics, but just to stress, we need to be able to search transcriptions of text and voice. We need to be able to navigate uh, through those transcriptions to see the different parts of that conversation uh, between the customer. And in this case on screen, you see the agent. Uh, we need to be able to identify markers and uh, in our terminology at Spitch, uh, marker uh, represents a whole range of things, uh, entities, for example. So by entity, we would mean a product name or a process name, uh, but it might be um, uh, less tangible. It might describe the emotions. It might describe the um, actual conversation process from the agent's point of view. In other words, we might be measuring how well an agent performed, for example. It also contains quantitative and time parameters. It's very important to understand things like silences in a conversation. And we also need to identify um, uh, where there's punctuation and also um, have the ability to filter uh, both on phrasing, on features, and on keywords. And we also need to be able to integrate with that interface. And in our case, uh, this is all provided within a dashboard. We also have uh, graphics um, to display um, the contents of the transcription in terms of the sections as the conversation moves forward, and also um, what we call the word cloud, so that we can highlight in a larger font uh, those words and phrases uh, that are occurring most frequently. And then within the cloud tools to support that graphical environment, uh, we need to be able to visualize both words and phrases and our markers. And in the example on screen, you'll see that in this one, um, it's broken down the conversation um, so that you can actually 
analyse quite deeply um, uh, new insights, shall we say, into that conversation in terms of what's happening and um, the sort of um, things in this case, like contacts, like call scheduling, references to other companies, etc. And then finally, from the analytics environment, we need to be able to uh, output, whether that's to something simple like Excel or whether it's to um, a specialized reporting environment. Because, you know, the design team needs to be able to communicate at a higher level back. Uh, it might be to the board, it might be to senior management. And very often um, when a uh, virtual assistant program kicks off in the design phase, um, there are some kind of um, ideals, which uh, what we call top down. And we need to change that with the um, discovery phase and analytics so that it almost is driven from bottom up. So we need to be able to communicate back what we're finding uh, in all these interactions and be able to report clearly. So just a, a very simple high level um, diagram in terms of um, comparing what you might call the traditional discovery phase where, where only the CRM is used as a source of information versus using a CRM and uh, the output from a conversational analytics platform. So as I mentioned, um, you could call the traditional um, uh, approach, top-down approach. So when the uh, project is given the go-ahead, um, it's very much a case of uh, what we want to automate and, and how we want to do that. Um, but of course, the CRM, it's not inaccurate, but the information is limited. And as I said before, we don't have access to those interactions within that. You know, we don't know how the customer got to complete that particular interaction, whether that was via text or whether via call. And so those interaction contents are hidden. Um, the net result is there might be limited success. I mean, it could be a, a successful implementation, but the chances are because um, we didn't know about these interactions, um, it's only um, functional to a certain degree. And so certain expectations may have been raised um, um, uh, without uh, being able to fulfill those in the final outcome. But if we look at using the CRM along with conversational analytics, we can then um, start to take a bottom up approach. In other words, we're redefining um, from going from what we want uh, in automation to what we actually need, because we're looking at an information rich environment where we can see potential problems, we can see bottlenecks in processes, we can see workloads, both from an agent point of view, we can see difficulties that the customers are having in getting those interactions to completion. And what we arrive at is a situation where this, this information is able to steer uh, the design phase in the discovery phase, um, and we can arrive at the best outcome. So just a few insights that you might gain by adopting this sort of process um, is um, things like how easy or difficult it is for your customers um, to have a successful interaction. For example, how long it might take. And I don't mean for a particular, uh, for example, phone conversation. Um, they might have been trying to get through. So how many attempts has it taken then? Um, obviously during COVID, um, call centres have been under enormous stress with home working, et cetera, reduced staff. Uh, and so this is exacerbated. Um, which channels are used? Do they have a preference? You know, what are the volumes? What are the st statistics for particular interactions, particular intents? And how happy is the customer with the outcome? So we can gauge sentiment to a certain degree of the customer and the agent. Um, and are these outcomes exactly what was wanted? Again, by looking at the contents and analyzing interactions, we can tell whether the customer was happy or whether they were just okay. And an important thing here, did the agents miss an opportunity during that interaction? For example, an upsell. Routine requests, what exactly are they? 
what do they resemble when we look at the interactions? Also, where are the bottlenecks in those conversational interactions? These are just some of the insights that you're going to gain um, by using conversational analytics in the discovery phase. And this leads to um, being able to highlight what are the areas that we really need to automate uh, and at the most basic, um, if not that, then what processes uh, do we need to improve to help that along? So I know it's a, a, a quick run through what is a quite a big subject, but um, we'll, we'll, we'll hopefully uh, uh, have some questions afterwards. So thanks very much.